In today's video, we're going to talk about Web3, what it is, and all the exciting things that are coming up with Web3. Nothing I say on this channel is financial advice, so always do your own research before investing any money. Let's dive into it, guys. So over the last three years, people have been referring to Web 3.0, but actually it's just Web 3. Now we have already seen iterations of Web 1, Web 2, and then Web 3. Web 1, if you're the same sort of age as me, you probably used Web 1, where you would have used Google, you would have used various other information available on the internet. And basically all you could get from using the internet was basically you could go and look up information and find things. It was very difficult for you to interact with anything, but it was also something that led to Web 2. Web 2 itself, the introduction of other things like PayPal, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. And this then meant that we could start using different services. We could upload our own content like we could on YouTube. Uh, we could also do other things using Instagram. We could use Facebook and other things like that. We saw the rise of e-commerce with Amazon.com and various others. But Web3 is a whole different beast. There's some really exciting stuff happening with Web3 that you need to know about if you are interested in investing in crypto in general, but also if you are just interested in the development of the future and how it's really going to affect you and the job that you might do in your day-to-day -day life. So over on CoinMarketCap, we can find out a little bit more about what Web3 is. It's a decentralized network, which basically means it doesn't work from one particular space, but it's basically created and held within a network of various different people, which means no one organization has control over it but it allows interaction one another between different peers without having anyone as a kind of a middleman and this is very cool because it allows for like trust networks and various other things to be built through a blockchain system which enables us to carry out transactions maybe it's something like buying an nft from another person where you can just buy that nft and it's automatically processed on the blockchain the other person will then become the owner of that nft after they've sent the funds and it's all registered through an autonomous network system in the blockchain. That's just one utility of Web3 and how it might be used going forward. Now, another part of the growth of the Web3 network is the growth of AI or artificial intelligence. And this is taking over cryptocurrency itself. In fact, it's starting to take over all different facets of life. You've probably come across ChatGPT recently that enables you to pretty much find out information on anything to get help with all the different tasks and things you're doing. And this is very powerful because it's allowing people to now free up their time to work on other creative projects. And it's a very exciting thing. There's also projects, there's also AI developments going on around things like trading, around things like SEO for building websites, website creation, the creation of digital avatars, voiceovers, where you can basically go and create a YouTube video like this. I am a real person, but you could very soon create a YouTube video of someone like this talking on videos and basically all through a complete AI system. This is very, very interesting because it enables lots of different people who previously may not have had access to do things like this to now start to develop their own creativity. So this is talking about AI itself. Imagine a new type of internet that not only accurately interprets what you input, but actually understands everything you convey, whether you use whether through text, voice, or other media. One where all content you consume is more tailored to you than ever before. Now, this does already kind of exist. When you're watching YouTube, you probably notice, if you go to your subscriptions tab on YouTube and you look through, you'll probably find people you subscribed to years ago that you've never seen content for for the last few years. And that's because the YouTube algorithm, which is a smart learning tool, is working out the kind of things that you like to watch and is always monitoring the amount that you interact with different stuff. So for example, if you interact with a video about barbecuing, you're probably gonna start to see loads of content on barbecuing. The same as if you're using Spotify and you like to listen to a certain type of music, you'll probably get suggested different bands and those bands are similar to the types of bands that you've been listening to, or at least because the AI has been understanding what the network of people is listening to, will start to understand similar behaviors and habits of people and start to present you with things that you're gonna interact with more in order to gain your attention. So if we look into a definition specifically of what Web3 is, is a third generation tier of the internet that is currently being built. You are already interacting with some Web3 things, whether you know it or not, but there is gonna be more and more of it happening over this year and into next year and beyond, where websites and apps will be able to process information in a human-like way through technologies like artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, ML, big data, decentralized ledger technology, DLT, 
and much, much more. Now, one big part of Web3 that people are sort of starting to talk about more and more is the metaverse. Metaverse and Web3 are not the same thing, but the metaverse itself will run on a Web3 environment. The concept of the metaverse dominates tech headlines in 2022 with Facebook rebranding to Meta. The metaverse is essentially a digital world, kind of like if you played video games in the past, then you've probably already interacted with a metaverse-like environment. This is a new and interesting feature, which is starting to become very interesting for a number of big entertainment companies, for a number of big gaming companies, and basically other production companies. Companies like Adidas, etc., have also taken a huge interest in the metaverse because it's a great opportunity for them to build out their ecosystem and advertise to a wider range of potential customers. Now, if we jump across to Coin and Market Cap, where you can see pretty much every major cryptocurrency listed here, there's different tabs you can click on. So we've got categories, we've got DeFi, NFT, Metaverse, and much, much more, right? If I click on Metaverse, right, I can come down and I can see all of these different tokens that are created around the Metaverse. We've got Decentraland, which was pretty much one of the original Metaverse tokens. You've then got Axie Infinity here, which is a crypto game. You've got the Sandbox, which is basically similar to kind of like a Metaverse where you can achieve different things, but you can also go and buy different parts of land within this environment. And each of these pieces of land, if you like, are NFTs. You can then go and buy that NFT. You can add and change it. You can then sell it on to other companies, other people, and potentially, and this is so hard to comprehend, guys, because it's gonna change the world we live in so drastically and if you fail to get involved with it and understand it properly you're probably going to fall behind and i don't mean to scare you but there's plenty of jobs out there that are going to get very easily replaced by lots of this technology that's coming in. And I think it's gonna happen far quicker than people are willing to realize. If you wanna to continue to learn more about Web3, NFTs, and that sort of area of the markets, then make sure you subscribe, guys, because we talk about it regularly on this channel, and it's definitely something you need to be paying attention to. Now, there's a number of cryptocurrencies that are kind of behind the growth of Web3, and there's definitely cryptos that you should be paying attention to if you're looking into the Web3 environment. First of all, we're gonna look at Helium, which is linked down below, along with everything I've talked about, guys. People-powered network, powered by the Helium blockchain. Now, an individual can basically put a Helium router in their house, and they'll then earn rewards in the Helium token for this. This enables Helium to basically put out a 5G network that's basically supported by individuals across the world rather than a centralized network. This therefore creates a highly decentralized network. And this enables Helium to create a powerful, decentralized web that can be accessed by everyone around the world. And the more people that are willing to put these nodes out, the better the network gets and the more beneficial it is to continue using this Helium network. And this is a very exciting thing because it allows the individual to contribute to the network by mining Helium. By holding a rotor in my house, I will be paid in rewards for mining Helium. This is very exciting because it means that now I have access to being able to provide a service for other people that I'll get paid a reward for that maybe before I would never have had access to. You also got another well-known cryptocurrency, which is Chainlink. And coming over to Coindesk, we can see a little bit more about Chainlink. We can see that Chainlink itself provides the main incentive mechanism for users to participate in the Chainlink decentralized network of oracles. Link is an ERC-20 or Ethereum-based token on the Ethereum blockchain. And unlike Ethereum, Link uses proof of stake consensus protocol in the participants to run their own nodes and are required to provide data to the smart contracts. So Chainlink basically creates decentralized oracles and oracles are basically holding tons of different data. It's unable to create its own data and it's unable to send that data on, but that data exists within these decentralized oracles. And these oracles facilitate the communication between different blockchains. And if that's a bit hard to understand, so you've got the Ethereum blockchain where maybe you've got NFTs and things being sold on that Ethereum blockchain, but you've also got a Solana blockchain. You can't then send information across these different networks because these blockchains don't interact with each other, but by bringing in the Chainlink oracle, things like that, it allows for cross-chain information to be sent. And ultimately, to summarize that, Chainlink is an internet for blockchains. So basically enabling you to access and use all of the different features of different blockchains, and it will then come in and link up, as in the name, these different blockchains to provide the best service possible. You've then got others like Filecoin. Now, if you think about it at the moment, you've got a centralized cloud storage service, such as Google Cloud Service or Google Drive, right? That means that I'm basically able to store information on the internet and it's kept somewhere in the world in a Google storage center. Now that's centralized storage. However, you, me, and everyone else tends to have a bit of storage left on their computer. Filecoin enables you to share your extra space with other people around the world in order to give them the service of having the extra storage. You will then be rewarded for doing this in getting Filecoin 
and you'll be paid in Filecoin. So this is another way in which you can make a passive income by being able to hold this particular feature because everyone continues to require more and more data, data being power. People are starting to lose faith in Google and Meta and various others because they are accessing their data and they can use that data against them, which is giving people a bit of fear as well. And then I want to see another one. And then I want to talk about this, which is Theta Coin. Now you've already got YouTube and the average YouTuber will upload a video and then the people who are watching the video will enjoy watching the video, hopefully. If you are enjoying watching this video, then make sure you hit the thumbs up button for me. And those individuals will get shown ads and things like that. Now YouTube will keep a portion of the ad revenue that is generated by the viewer watching the video, but the creator, such as myself, will receive the other half of that payment. But in order for YouTube to work, well, then it needs people to come and watch the videos, but those people aren't really getting any sort of rewards and they're not really able to contribute to the network at all apart from just providing the view. But Theta Network is slightly different in that the individual user will also be able to provide bandwidth to Theta Network in order to be able to get videos out to a wider range of different audiences because you can't actually access YouTube in every part of the world. There are areas that are unable to access it due to a lack of bandwidth. So you can provide bandwidth to the Theta Network, enabling various other people around the world to receive videos video content and in return you'll receive tokens or theta tokens as a reward. So in summary, Web3, whether you like it or not, is coming in and is about to change the world as we know it. It's happening faster than you've already realized and it's gonna exponentially be getting faster and faster all the time. There's plenty of different ways in which you can invest in Web3 by gaining an understanding of Web3 and all of the opportunity that is coming with it. If you enjoyed today's video, guys, hit that thumbs up button for me. If you wanna know more about Web3, NFTs, crypto in general, then make sure you hit subscribe and I will continue to bring you more up-to-date information as it happens. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.